Hey guys, it's me, I am back, and I can't believe I'm shooting this for the second time because, well, this idiot forgot to turn autofocus on and there was a 12 minute video with me out of focus. So, decided to reshoot just so, uh, well, there's something in focus for you lot. What I want to talk about today is X399 and AMD's new Threadripper processors that go with uh, the chipset, which is X399, and why they're really important. So, first off, there's a few things we, we do know about Threadripper. So, the top of the line Threadripper chip is going to have 16 cores and 32 threads, which in and of itself is insane for a consumer or prosumer market. You usually see 16 core with uh, Xeon or Opteron or anything like that, which is like a server chip, which is actually where Threadripper comes from. So the other thing we know is the socket. So the socket that AMD is using for Threadripper is a modified server socket, which uh, I think is socket TR4. Um, I'm just calling it LGA4094 because A, it's an LGA socket this time, and B, there is 4,094 pins. That is almost double the amount of pins as is on Intel's HED platform, HETT platform with LGA2066. That is insane. So, we know core count, uh, 16 cores, 32 threads. We know it's gonna have, I can't believe I'm saying this, 64 PCIe lanes, 60 of which come from the CPU itself, the other four are from the chipset. And the way these can be set up is, is absolutely insane, but we're seeing the uh, Alienware Area 51 coming with a Threadripper chip, and then three Radeon RX 580s in Crossfire, and each of those GPUs is getting a full by 16 slot. There's still like 12 to 14 lanes left over. You could put in a couple of PCIe SSDs or a RAID card or a network interface card or a sound card, like anything like that. There's just so many PCIe lanes to throw around that it doesn't really matter. And that's actually all we know. We don't know price, we don't know TDPs. What we've heard, and again, completely unsubstantiated rumor, but the 16 core, 32 thread, thread ripper processor is going to cost $849, which sounds like a lot, and it is a lot of money. But when you start looking into how much Xeon's cost, or Opteron's cost, or hell, even how much Intel's 16 core 32 thread CPU is going to cost. This comes in at like half the price of whatever the 16 core Skylet Kex CPU is. So they're actually being really, really competitive. If 849 is true, the 16 core 32 thread thread ripper chip is going to cost less, $150 less than the 10 core 20 thread 7900K. That is insane. We know that thread ripper is going to be massively powerful. We've also seen photos of it, and well, it's literally massive. I'm gonna put a photo here of uh, Dr. Lisa Sue, I think it is, holding Threadripper. It, you have to hold it like this. Most CPUs you can get away with like holding one in each corner because they're quite small, they're quite light. No, this has to be four fingers on top, one on the bottom because you need to, you need to grip it. This thing's kind of massive. And if you see it from the back, which again, I'll put another photo in here, it looks like two CPUs glued together, which I kind of think that actually might be what it is. So we know that AMD is using something called CCXs. So this is uh, a core complex, that's it. Basically, each core complex has four CPU cores and 16 megs of L3 cache. Uh, sorry, no, 8 megs of L3 cache. That is why on the Ryzen 5 1400, you have 4 cores, 8 threads, and 8 megs of cache. 
Whereas on the 1700, the 1700X and the 1800X, they are eight cores and 16 threads and 16 megs of L3 cache. That is because the way CCXs work is like Lego blocks. You can just stick two of them together. That's cool. This really modular interface means they can kind of just scale them up. And if you actually have a look under the hood, so under the heat spreader, there are photos of uh, de-lidded thread ripper chips. And there are just four little uh, packages because that's what it is. And this is so, so cool. But if you look at it from the back, it looks like two CPUs and a single substrate. And if you look at the socket, so if you look on the, at the pins on OGA4094, it looks like two sockets glued together. So the reason Threadripper and X399 are important is because Intel needs competition. If you go back and look at the Skylake X and KB Lake X, announcement, there are pretty much no details for the 18 core 36 thread, 16 core 32 thread, and I think, I could be wrong, the 14 core 28 thread. Because as far as I've, I've heard, which again, could be an unsubstantiated rumor, Intel wasn't planning on launching these. They weren't. So when AMD decided to drop that, oh, by the way, uh, thread ripper bitches, like 16 core, 32 threads, 64 PCIe lanes, like boom, like, like, a, like AMD just kind of took the, the thunder out of AMD, uh, Intel's product launch. And I think the only thing they really knew how to do was to take these chips that, these were probably going to be Xeons. Let, like, I'm pretty sure that the 16 and 18 core Core i9s were going to be Xeons. Like they, the, the way that Intel held back detail, like, like pretty much everything apart from price was like blurred out. Like uh, we don't know clock speeds, we didn't know TDPs, we know core count and PCIe lane. And another, and that again kind of ties into why we need Threadripper and uh, X399. Threadripper and X399, all the chips that fit in there will have 64 PCIe lanes. The top of the line, 18 core, 36 thread, $2,000 Intel, I think it's like the, the 7890X or whatever it turns out to be. That has 44 PCIe lanes. And as you step down Intel's uh, X series, or the, just the HEDT, the X299 stuff, you go from 44 to 28 to 16. So if you want that eight core 16 thread, you better be, you better be okay with having like 28 PCIe lanes, maybe even lower. So that is kind of why this is important. And again, another reason, the price, the prices, oh my God. If you go back and look last year, the 6950X is Intel's first 10 core high-end desktop CPU. It cost $1,700. This year, the 7900K, which replaces the 6950X, is a thousand. $700 in a single generation doesn't happen because Intel's feeling generous. They're feeling squeeze, and they should do, because Ryzen 7 has been received really well, Ryzen 5 has been received really well. Ryzen 3 and Raven Ridge, they're not even here yet. Those are gonna be the real money makers for AMD. The sub 100 to 150 uh, dollar price point, that is gonna be important. When you can get uh, a quad core, no, let's go even lower. We'll say a sub 100 dollar with two Zen cores and a couple of Vega GPU cores on a single package. That's maybe a kid's first gaming PC. They don't have to buy a, a graphics card. The CPU cores are high, uh, high performance enough. Maybe, maybe they do need to upgrade to a quad core, but it's AM4. So they can just put uh, a, a, five, a Ryzen 5 1600 in with six cores. Maybe they go balls to the wall and put in an 1800X if they can afford it or in, and if their PSU supports it. 
stuff like this is why it's important to have competition. And AMD is the only one able to give competition to Intel on the desktop. AMD, they've done some really boring stuff at like various points in time, like really boring stuff. The fact that the 300 series of graphic cards were pretty much all rebrands of 200 series cards. The 8350, 8370, and their E variants, and even the 9590, they were all just variants of the 8320, a chip that had been out for a while. Shell, AMD even recycled the 970 and 990FX sockets. Like, they've done some seriously boring stuff, but they are also the only company to just say fuck it and to make some crazy stuff. Do you remember the 295X2? I do. That was a single GPU with two cores on it. Doesn't sound too crazy. Dual GPU cards have existed before. These were two full fat Hawaii XT GPUs. So that each one had 2,880 GPU cores. They both had a 512 bit memory interface. This thing came with a liquid cooler from the factory. It consumed 500 watts. Yet they only put two 8 pin power connectors on it, which comes out to like 350 watts. So AMD had to go make a special list of PSUs that would work and which 8 pin cables were connected to the 12 pin rails. Who else does that? No one does that. Nvidia doesn't do that. Intel won't do that for your CPU. And AMD's done that on the CPU side as well. I already mentioned the 9590 basically being a rebadged 8320. So what? It was an 8 core, 8 thread, or 4 module, 8 thread, however you want to look at it. It's hyper binned, absolutely hyper binned, so it could reach 5 gigahertz. It took a liquid cooler out of the box to make it usable, and it consumed 220 watts. But they still did it. They didn't expect to sell many, and they probably didn't. But they sold some, and it got people excited. Because the PC market gets boring. We need competition. No one else can give it to Intel. No one else has got an x86 license apart from VIA. And when was the last thing, you, what was the last thing you heard VIA announce? Yeah, so the reason X399 and Threadripper are important is because we as an industry need this. We need high performance, low cost parts. We need competition in the market space. So in a couple of days, I'm gonna have another video up which is why Intel should be worried. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below if I've finished editing it at this point. So tell me what you think of this video. Do you like Threadripper as a name? I don't. Do you like X399 as a socket name? Again, I don't. It's kind of a uh, uh, pissing contest against Intel's and X299. Doesn't matter. So yeah, do you, are you excited about Threadripper? Do you prefer Skylake X and KB Lake X for so you can you can prefer Skylake X, but KB Lake X, really? Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Would you buy one? What do you think it's going to cost? Should should Asrock make a mini ITX X399 board like they did for X299 and X99? Let me know in the comments below. You can find me at mobile underscore dom on pretty much every social network: Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, stuff like that. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.